This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ruchem Avam to the Kol Agra de Perka. We begin with a stanza from the Zmirois of Shabbos that were written by Rabbi Huda Halevi, the Baal Hakuzari. Yerim Shabbos and Ein We say Diber Bakadshay Bahar Hamar. He spoke in His Holiness on the Mount of Mer. Yom Hashvi Zachar Vashamar, that on the seventh day you should remember and you should keep. So this is referring to um, the giving of the Torah. Diber b'kodesh b'har Hamar Yom Hashvi Zachar Vashamar v'chol pikudav yachad ligmar chazek masnayim. Very good, beautiful. Okay, so the question is. What? The question is, Rav Oisai, these words that were written by Rabbi Yudha Halevi, who lived from 1075 to 1140, the legendary author of Kina Ha'atziah and Halois Sishali, he writes so beautifully, Diber Bekotche Baharamar. The only thing is, there's something inaccurate over here because uh, everybody here knows that the Torah was given on Har Sinai. So, what in the world does it mean, Diber Bekotche Baharamar? We know the Gemara in Taina says, um, Lama Nikro Shemai Har Hamaria. Why was uh, Har? Why was it called Hamaria? So, Rab Levi, Rab Chama, Rab Chanina. What? Um, actually, there there are various perushim. The, the Gemara in Tainus says Lama Nikro Shemai Maria Shemisham Yatsa Hayra Li Yisrael. Rashi says Kimitziyin Teitzei Sayra Udvar Hashem Yishalayim. Or from there, Moira went to the Oivdei Kaychavim. The Goyim were afraid of us. Uh, Rashi explains because they heard about the godless of Kal Yisrael. Uh, there's another shot of the Medrash. Lama Nikro Shemai Moria Al Shem Hamor Hatov Sheyesh Nosham because there's a lot of mer over there. But be it as it may, one thing that did not happen on Har Hamaria is the Torah was not given there. So what in the world is Rabbi Huda Levi talking about? Diber Bekadshay Bahar Hamor Yoy Mashvi Zachar Vasham. Okay, so we come to Parsha Yisroi. So we know the beginning of the Parsha Vayishma Yisroi. Kaihen Midyan Chaisein Moshe. Yisroi heard. He was moved, he changed, he came. came. When did he come? Came when did he come? Achlo. So it's a machloikas rishonim. It's a machloikas whether Yisroi came before the Torah was given or did Yisroi come after the Torah was given. Fine, that's one machloikas. However, if you continue on a little bit further into the parsha, the Pasuk says, Vayhi mi machra, so it was the next day. And Vayeshev Moshe lishbaresa, Moshe sat to judge the people. The people stood by Moshe min haboiker ad ha'arev from morning until evening. And the shver came along and the shver said, I have a good Eitzah. Right? What was the Eitzah? The Eitzah is, um, you know, you're going to tire out, you're going to weary out, it's too much work for you, you need to appoint lower courts and if it's a big shaila, they'll come to you. So Rashi says on this line, Vahimi Machras, that it was the next day after what? So Rashi points out, well, let's think for a moment. If Moshe Rabbeinu is judging the people, what system of law is he using? He's using the Torah. So it must have been after the Torah was given. You can't judge the people based on the Dine Torah before the Torah was given. So obviously it was after the Torah was given. So says Rashi, when after the Torah was given, from the time Moshe Rabbeinu went up on Vav Sivan, he didn't come down until Yudzayin Tammuz. He comes down Yudzayin Tammuz, they made the Yegel, so he had to break the Luchas, and he had to go up a second time. And Hashem, after the 40 days, Erev Rosh Chodesh El, Hashem said, you know, let's try a third time, come up a third time, and he went up a third time. So for 120 days, he didn't have a chance to sit and judge the people. So what does it mean it was the next day? It had to have been the day after Yom Kippur. Says Rashi, even if you say that Yisroi came before the Torah was given, this parsha was written, was occurred after the Torah was given. Meaning, even if you want to say the opening of the Torah, of the opening of the parasha, of Yishma Yisrael occurred before the Torah was given, so you'll get out of the problem of it's not in chronological order, you can't get out of that problem. Because even if the first parasha, in the beginning of Yisrael, was before the Torah was given, the second episode in Yisrael was certainly occurred after the Torah was given. And you have to say the following principle, what? Ein muktam umu'ukhar matayra. Says Rashi, Vayhimi Machras, Moitzo Yom Akipurim Haya. It was the day after Yom Kippur. Kach Shaninu B'Sifri. This is what we learned in the Sifri. Umahu Mi Machras. What does it mean, Mi Machras? 
Lamachras Ridatoi Min Hahar. The day after they came down from the mountain. In fact, the Balaturim points out, Mimachras, Bigamatria, Lamachar, Yoim, Hakipuram. Bial Karchach says, Rashi, you have to say, Yev Shaloimar Elam Mimachras Yom Kippur. There's no alternative but to say this transpired the day after Yom Kippur. Why? Shaharei Koy de Matan Taira, Yev Shaloimar. Because before the Torah was given, it's impossible that Yisrael instructed Moshe that I'm, that I'm teaching them the Torah. It must have been after the Torah was given. From the day the Torah was given, Yom Kippur, Moshe did not sit to judge the people. Why? On the 17th day of Thomas, he went down. And he broke the Luchos. The next day, he went up early. Visha Shmainim Yom. He waited eighty days. Viyarad Yom Kippur. He came down on Yom Kippur. Says Rashi. Viein Parsha Zuk Suva Kaseder. This Parsha is not written in order. Shalei Nemar Vayhimi Machras Ad Shana Shnia. This Parsha, Parak Yud Ches Pasuk Yud Gimel. Number two on the sheet, Vahimi Machras, it did not occur until year two. In other words, in year one they left Mitzrayim, they left Mitzrayim Pesach time, they got the Tar Shavuos time, but Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't come down from Harsinai until year two after Rosh Hashanah, and that is when, after Yom HaKippurim, that is when Yisrael um, gave this advice. Shalai Nemar, Vahimi Machras, Ad Shana Shnia. Af ledivrei ha'oymer Yisrael koidamat and Even according to the opinion that Yisrael came before the Torah was given, now, if you say Yisra came after the Torah was given, the entire first section of Parshat Yisra is out of order. It occurred after the Torah was given. But even if you say Yisra came before the Torah was given, this Parsha happened after the Torah was given. So to me, it's very interesting that what is the introduction to the Aser Sadebrais? What's the introduction to the giving of the Torah? A story that did not take place yet. In other words, the Hakdama, the immediate introduction to the giving of the Torah is Ein Muktama Mu'ukhar Batayra. That's the, the uh, Hakdama of Kabbalah Satayra. Ein Muktama Mu'ukhar Batayra. This must be a very important concept then. I mean, if this is the concept that immediately precedes the giving of the Torah, it must be a very fundamental concept. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the Shver's advice. What was Yisrael's advice? It's an amazing Pasuk. Parak Yud Ches, Pasuk Chaf. Yisroi tells Moshe, you know what you're going to teach them? V'hoidata lohem, you're going to instruct them. Es haderech yelchuba, the road that they're going to go on. V'es hamasa, and the actions, asher ya'asun, that they should do. Instruct them the road they should go on, and the actions that they should do. What's Yisroi telling Moshe? Says, the Gemara Bav Matziah, Daf Lamed Amad Beis, the Tani Rav Yosef, Vahidata Lohem. What does it mean? You should teach them Ze Beis Chayehem. That is a livelihood. A livelihood. Moshe Rabbeinu teach Klal Yisrael to make a livelihood. You know, I once heard from Adam Gadol, making a livelihood is a mitzvah in the Torah. Where does it say that? This is a pasuk. Vahidata Lohem Es Haderach. Teach them. What's the, teach them? What should you teach them? Zebes chayeim, es haderech, zugemilas chasadim. Teach them to do chesed. Yelchu, zebikor chaylam, visiting the sick. Ba, zukvura. Oh, wait a second. I thought this is after the Torah was given. What after the Torah was given? There's only four mitzvahs in the Torah. One is teach them to make a living. Two is teach them to do chesed. Three is teach them to visit the sick. And four is teach them to bury the dead. What happened to wearing tzitzis, tefillin, Shabbos, limon ha yamtif? Maybe what happened to not speaking, teach them not to speak Lashon Hara. Teach. Why are these the only four mitzvahs that Yitzray is emphasizing to Moshe Is that odd? Why would Yitzray, Yitzray pick on these four mitzvahs? Okay. So let us enunciate the following very important principle. And that is that the verdict of mankind, right, like they say, uh, there are two things that are unavoidable in life, yeah? Death and taxes, right? Everybody, one day, they, they leave this world. It's inevitable, 
Right? It happens to everybody. But there are certain vicissitudes in life that are, are those are the natural consequences of living as a human being. And yet, Chazal tell us that the plan was that when Hashem gave the Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu, we were supposed to live forever. Just like Adam Rishon in Gan Eden, he was supposed to live forever. When Hashem gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael, we were supposed to live forever. We were going to go back to the Madrega of Adam Rishon before the sin. There would be no death. In fact, there's a Pasuk in Tehillim, Parak Pebez, Ani Amarti Elohim Atem. I thought you would be like a god. Uvnei Elyon Kolchem. And you would be like the Supreme. In fact, the Gemara says in Avodah Zarah, Daphim Vezek number 8, the Tanya Rabbi Yossi Oimer, like Kiblu Yisrael Asatayra, Ela Kedei Shelo Yehei Malach HaMavesh Sholeit Bohem. Klal Yisrael only received the Torah so that the Malach HaMavesh should not, should not have any dominion over them. Shenemar, Ani Amarti Elohim Atem, Uvnei Elyon Kulchem. Fine, that was the plan. So I would say, good plan, God. You know, I like it. Good idea. However, look in the next passage in Tehillim, Achein ke Adam Timosan. But you too will die like Adam. Ucha'achar hasarim tipailo. And like one of the princes, you will fall. By the way, this is the Yaim, right? Kuma Elohim Shafta Ares. Yeah, what day is that? Monday. Okay, you have only seven choices. And you know it's not Shabbos. And you know it's not Sunday. And you know it's not Friday. Monday. Yeah, it's either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you look it up in the Siddur. Okay. So, Rabbi Sai, what happened? This was such a good plan. God gave us the Torah. We were going to live forever. So, what happened? When the Jewish people sinned with the Egal, we lost that benefit that God wanted to bestow on mankind. Marisha, so, what? So, yeah, but you know, what Rashi says in this week's parsha. On um, Parshas B'Shalach, you know, Bahade Hutza Lucky Karba. With the uh, with the weeds goes the cabbage. In other words, you know, everybody got. Uh, but in any event, Rabbi Sai, the ladies also, you know, the women didn't either. But Tuesday. Okay, good. So you remember tomorrow. But Rabbi Sai, so what happened? We sinned with the Egel, and when we sinned with the Egel, we now succumb to what other Marishon had to succumb. Now we're subject to death, unfortunately, man is not, does not live infinitely. That's what the Gemara tells us. The plan was, upon receiving the Torah, we would have lived forever, but unfortunately, achen ka'adam tamusan, the Gemara says, chibaltem asechem, your actions destroyed it, achen ka'adam tamusan. Okay. But what's very interesting is, that it's not only that death was going to be abolished with the giving of the Torah, but all the various vicissitudes of life we're supposed to cease with the giving of the Torah. Rashi tells us that Rebun Shem appeared, look at number 9, Le'enei kol ha'am. Le'enei kol ha'am, Melamed shaloi haya bahem suma. There were no blind people. Shenesrapu kulam. They were all healed. Rashi happens to say in Parshas Re'e that there were no evyoinim, there were no poor people. So not only were people not supposed to die, but all the difficulties, all the vicissitudes, all the illness and sickness and uh, imperfections and difficulties and challenges in life would have ended. We would have reverted back to Adam Harishan in Gan Eden, where the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, Adam Harishan Haya Mesav, Umalach Ashares, Soylen Loi Basar, Umasanen Loi Yayin. We would have been reclining in Gan Eden, and the heavenly angels would have been barbecuing for us. The and Torah, The Torah talks about honey in the Torah. Mashman, there were going to be honey in even no, when the Torah well. was given. That's only, uh, that was only a result of the Chet HaEgel. Had it not been for the Chet HaEgel. It wasn't in the Torah before the Chet HaEgel. There were mitzvahs, but it was, you know, like Hilchus Ol wasn't uh, It wouldn't be uh, relevant. That is what, that's what Chazal tell us. Now, it's very interesting. It happens to be that there was still one place in the world that maintained the pristine and uh, the level of Adam Arishan before the sin, even after the Chet HaEgel. In other words, there is one area in the world where it always maintained that Madrega, that level, of when the Rebbe Shem gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael, and that place is the Beis HaMikdash. Because the Mishnah says in Perkei Avos, look at number 10, 
Asara Nisim Nasula Vesenu Vesa Mikdash. There were ten miracles that occurred every day in the Vesa Mikdash. Loi Hipila Isha Merech Basara Kodesh, a woman didn't miscarry. Vloi Hisriach Basara Kodesh Meoilam, the meat never rot. Vloi Nira Zvuv Vesa Medvachim, there were no flies. And the Kohen Gadol never became Tame. The Mishnah goes on to list ten miracles that occurred daily in the Vesa Mikdash. So one of the great commentaries on Pirkei Avais is the Chassid Yavitz, Rabbi Yosef Yavitz, who was born in Spain in 1435. He was exiled in 1492. He came to Italy. He was one of the, an associate of the Abarbanel. But his farm are very important farm. I once heard from one of my Rabbeim, uh, Rabbi Yomin Luban, he said he asked Rav uh, Zaychik, you know, the author of Nitzaytzei Musar, Sparks of Musar, you know, what should a person learn to gain Yerah So he was, he was told the Swarm of Rabbi Yosef Yavitz, the Chassid Yavitz. So the Chassid Yavitz has a very interesting comment on this Mishnah. Was He's, the historian Yavitz... Uh, uh, was he related? He him, yeah. Could be. He <laughs> was a very famous historian. Was it that in the Betamitah? What? Somebody was uh, killed in the Betamitah. Yeah, Zechariah, yeah, we, we killed Zechariah, right? We killed Zechariah. Yeah, yeah. But in general, you know, every rule has its exceptions. But in general, well, uh, the, there were ten miracles that happened. Women did not miscarry, the, the meat did not rot. So the, the Yaivitz, the Chassid Yaivitz, explains as follows. That before the sin of Adam Arishain, there was no kilkel in this world. There was no deficiency. There was no degeneration. Everything remained as was. Because Hashem created the world that nature really is subject to the Torah and not to, not to nature. So that was lost. That original mechanic that the world is subject to the Torah as opposed to subject to the vicissitudes of nature, that was lost. But there was one place in the world where they canned the idyllic state of being. And that is in the Beis HaMikdash. The Beis HaMikdash remained the way life was for other Marishon before the sin. And therefore in the Beis HaMikdash, meat did not rot. And the flies did not appear. And the Kohen Gadol never became Tameh. And a woman never miscarried. Because in the Beis HaMikdash, it was what he calls, like the Navi Yishaya says, the Garza Avim Kevesh. It's Keves. Keves. Thank you. That... That nature was that that the world was not subject to the deficiencies and the vicissitudes of nature, but instead, the uh, world was on the level of Adam Harishain before the sin. Okay, and then he concludes like this: In the Beis Hamikdash, nature did not reign. Asher hu achshav the way it is now. Ela kasher hayu betchila v'lazel lo yisreach b'sar hakodesh. So let's just think for a moment. Why do you think in the Beis Hamikdash it was not subject to the laws of nature? How how did life in the Beis Hamikdash rise above the laws of nature? The Ramban says at the beginning of Parshas Truma that the Mishkan and the Mikdash was just bottling up the covet of Hashem and the and the way life was on Har Sinai. In other words, we know God came down and He rested His Shekhinah on Har Sinai. So what the Mishkan was, it was just sort of bottling and eternalizing what was on Har Sinai. And just like on Har Sinai, when God gave the Torah to the Jewish people, it was Ani Amarti Elohim Atem. Therefore, the Mishkan encapsulated that, bottled that forever. So life in the Mishkan was the way life was when the Torah was given on Har Sinai. So comes the Chafetz Chaim, the Chafetz Chaim says, Adavar Nifla, an amazing thing. You know, when the Torah was given, there were certain mitzvahs that Moshe Rabbeinu did not need to instruct Kal Yisrael about. He didn't have to tell them, go out and make a living. What do you have to go out and make a living for? When the Torah was given, life was the way life was for other Marishon in paradise, where people would be able to recline, and the manna bread would come down from heaven, and there would be heavenly angels feeding you grapes and grilling you meat and feeding you wine. You don't have to go out to make a living. Making a living, making a parnasa, is a phenomenon that came about as a result of the deficiency of the Egel and the deficiency of the sin of Adam Arishain. But at the giving of the Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu never had to tell them, by the way, you got to go out and make a living. And he never had to tell them about the mitzvah, Bikr Chaylam. You know why? Because nobody became sick. And he didn't have to tell them about the mitzvah of Gemilus Chasadim. Why? Because nobody lacked anything. 
And he didn't have to tell them about the mitzvah of Kvuras Mesim, because there's nobody to bury. So there were four mitzvahs in the Torah that Moshe had no need to instruct Klal Yisrael. But the Shver was very smart. And what happened was, after the Chet Egal, life plummeted, and it was now subject to all the challenges and difficulties that we endure today. And unfortunately, there were sick people, and there were people in need, and there was a concept of Kvuras Nesim, and people had to go make a living. But Baruch Hashem Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai the third time, and he was davening for 40 days and 40 nights. Hashem forgive the Jewish people for what? The Chet Ha'egel. And on Yom Kippur, Hashem said the magic words, what? Salach B'Kivarecha. So you may mistakenly think, oh, Gavaldik! Life is now reverting back to the way it was when in the original plan when Hashem gave the Torah. Then nobody would get sick and nobody would die and nobody would need milch hasadim and nobody would need to make a living. And maybe now Moshe could say, you know what? I really don't have to tell them about these four mitzvahs. So the Shver said, don't make that mistake. Yes, Hashem said, Salach di Kidvarecha, but it's not a complete Slicha Mechila. You're still reverting back to the way life was before the Torah was given. You're not being granted this gift of being free from the Malach HaMavas. You're going to have to teach them to make a living. You're going to have to teach them to do Chesed. You're going to have to teach them to be Mavakar Chayla. You're going to have to teach them to bury the dead. Don't think that now that you're getting Lucha Shniyos, you're going back to the way it was, Lucha Shniyos, back to other Marish Chayim. Yisrael was a smart guy. Yisrael was saying, you heard Salat Yikivarech, but it's not, you know, Slicha Mechila Vekapara Gemura. Says the Chafetz Chaim, he writes this, by the way, in a footnote, in the Avas Chasad. He writes like this, he writes, V'hu diyadua, he says it's known, Ma'adi Isa b'medrash, the Koydamata and Torah, before the Torah was given, Kara Hashem Yisbarach l'malach ha'maves, Hashem called the malach ha'maves, V'omar lo, and he said to him, Afal pi shamini sicha al oilam, even though you have control over the whole world, Avalal Uma Zu Loy I'm sorry, I'm down I'm downsizing, you know? Until now you you worked in uh, forty different districts. Now it's only in seventy one districts. Now you only deal with the rest of the world, you have no business with the Jews. But after they sinned, Hashem, like it says, this benefit ceased. Like it says, Aniamarti Elohimatem. Achain ka'adam t'moson. Says the Chafetz Chaim, v'yata re'eh, look how beautifully this concept is illustrated in the Pesukim. Because at first it says, v'yahimi machras. And Moshe was judging the people, it was the day after Yom Kippur. And we know on Yom Kippur, Moshe Vedu came down with the Besura Taiva that Hashem had forgiven, forgiven them for the Chet Egel, like it says in Perkut Rebbe Lezer. So Yisroi tells Moshe, v'hoidato lohem esadarech, that even though when you were Makabal the Torah, you didn't need to tell them about Kfuras Mesim and Gemil Chasadim and all the other mitzvahs, so you'll think that now that the Chedo Ego is Nimchal, don't make the mistake and think it was Nimchal Lagamri. You still are now subject to the vicissitudes of life. So let me ask you a question. You know, this is a, a deeply troubling question here. The Gemara said, look at number eight that the only reason Klal Yisrael were Makabal the Torah is so that the Malach HaMavis doesn't rule over them. Well, now that the Malach HaMavis rules over, so maybe we should give the Torah back. <laughs> I mean, that's what it says. We were only Makabal the Torah. The only reason we received it is so that we should have dominion over the Malach HaMavis. Well, if we lost that, then the deal is off, you know. If somebody says, accept this, and I'll give you A, B, and C. So if we're not getting A, B, and C... So we don't want it. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it. The Gemara says the Gemara says we're only makabel the Torah, not to be subject to the Malach Hamavah. So deals off. Yeah, you know, Michael Tavis. No boxes. Well, there's a Mishnah Pirkei Avos. The Mishnah Pirkei Avos says that Nechunya ben Akana Oimer, Kal Hamakabel Olav Ol Torah. Ma'avirin mimenu o'el malchus o'el darachatz. Anyone who accepts upon themselves the yoke of Taira, they remove from upon them the yoke of the government and the yoke of darachatz. Darachatz means making a living. V'chol ha'parik mimenu o'el Taira. Anyone who casts off the yoke of Taira, noisin o'el malchus o'el darachatz. They place on him 
the yoke of the government and the yoke of making a living. It's a very hard Mishnah to understand. Someone who accepts upon himself the yoke of Tyra, they don't have the yoke of the government. I mean, everyone's living in the same country. You don't, you don't automatically get transported to a different country when you accept upon yourself the yoke of... I mean, everyone still pays taxes. There are no tax breaks for people who accept upon themselves the yoke of Tyra. And the yoke of Dara Haaretz? What, what does the Gemara mean? So the Rambam says something very startling. The Rambam says... Amar ki b'schar likchay oil hatayra, in the merit of accepting the yoke of the tayra, yatzileu Hashem isbarach, God will save you, v'yekam oil of tarach hazman, and He'll save you from the bothers of the time. So the Rambam saying a very important thing, and that is, no one's escaping the yoke of the government. Whatever responsibilities that the government places on a society, everyone is subject to. And whatever the responsibility of making a living is, it falls on everybody's shoulders. So what, is the, what does the Mishnah mean? If you're makabal on yourself, the oil of Tyra, you'll, then Hashem will remove the oil of Malchus and The Raman says, not completely, but the way I understand it is, he takes the edge off of it. You know, some people, they work, and it's all-consuming, and it takes up their entire life, and it's avoid das perach, and they can't breathe, and they can't live, and they can't spend time with their family, and they can't they can't learn. And others have some more breathing space. You know, everybody everybody has to do it, but some people have more flexibility. Or oil derecheretz, um, o malchus. Some people are more subjugated by the government. So what the Rambam is saying is what the Mishnah means is that in life you're always going to have a yoke. You, there's no way out. Everyone has a yoke on their shoulder. The more you accept the yoke of Tyra, the more dedicated and committed a person is to learning and observing the Tyra, the less you are subject and you're going to be subjugated by the vicissitudes of the natural world. So the question is, why? What does my job got to do with my accepting Torah? You think my boss cares if I learn more? You think my boss is going to make it easier for me? You think life will be easier for me because I learn more Torah? What does one thing got to do with the other? So look what the Ramam says. You know what the source of this is the Ramam? The Pasuk says that the following. The Pasuk says, The Luchais were the act of God. The Hamichtav Michtav Eloikimhu. And the script was the script of Hashem. Charos al haluchos engraved on the luchos says the the Chazal. Al tikri charos elo cheros ein lecha ben chayrin elami shaisek betalmatayim. So says the Ram. And listen to this. Va'amru charos al haluchos cheros al haluchos ratzolaymar ha cheros mitoldois hazman. You'll be freed to a certain extent from the vicissitudes of time, the inyane amalachim and the government, lamisha makabel va'oisa mash and nichtav aluchais. If you accept to observe what it says on the luchais. Listen carefully to the Ramam saying that if a person is dedicated and accepts upon themselves the yoke of Tyra, then they are freed. What does it mean they're freed from the Malcham It doesn't mean they're not going to die. It means they're freed from the pressure of the vicissitudes of, of the time, of nature. Well, Rambam, what are you talking about? That's what the plan was. But we lost it. What's the Rambam saying? The Rambam's explaining that Ein l'cha ben chayr al misha oisek batara, that's what the original plan was. But we lost it. Hashem took it away from us. We no longer have that benefit. Now, people, unfortunately, are subject to chayli. People are subject to difficult um, parnasa. People are subject to di- challenges and difficulties in life. What's the Rambam saying that if a person is makabal on themselves, the yoke of Torah, Hashem will make life easier. That was the plan, but guess what? We lost it. It didn't happen. We sinned with the eagle and it's out. So apparently, it's not out. And apparently, we didn't lose it completely. What we lost was that the original plan was people were not going to die, nobody would get sick, and nobody would need to make a living. And unfortunately, we lost that. But now there's a concept that 
there are forces of nature and everybody is subject to them. But how difficult they are and how, how much of a yoke they are and how biting they are and how sharp they are and how much they pack a punch, that is still within our capacity that if a person, the more a person is makabel, the yoke of Torah, God removes, obviously not entirely, everyone still goes to work, and everybody still is subject to the vicissitudes of time. But to a certain extent, if a person is makabel, the yoke of Torah, Hashem lifts them up a little bit where the edge is taken off. I want to show you the words of the Maral. The Maral seems to um, enunciate this point. The Maral says, look at number 16. The Maral on Pirkei Avos in his commentary, Dar Chachayim, the Maral says, The Omar, Kashar Adam Mikabel Olav Al Torah, Az Hu Im Hashem Yisbarach. Then he is with God. Vaz Ma'avirin Mimenu Al Malchus Al Darachars. And then they remove from him the yoke of the government and the yoke of Darachars. Ki Hanhaga Hashlishes Hazoyis He Hanhaga Lekes. That when a person is dedicated to the, to the observance and the learning of the Torah, he is, so to speak, with God. These two vicissitudes come as a result of this world. But once a person puts themselves with God, Says Maral, "Is that Amram Gamkin? This is what the Gemara Navayda Zara says. Amram Biyosu, like Kibli saw us a Torah. Ela shloi he malach hamavas umo v'lashen shalatas b'hem. Shenemar ani amarti el kima el atem v'nei alam kolche v'achin v'asod v'atam tipoilo. Umash shamar in malach hamavas shalat b'hem. What does it mean? The malach hamavas doesn't rule over them. Ze hanhagas hateva shaloyiu mesurin tachas hateva. Then when a person accepts the yoke of Torah, they are not." Delivered entirely to the forces of nature. So let's just read um, the underlying part. Says the Maral, Ulafikach, Omar Khan, Shemavirin Mimenu, Omalchus, Oldar Kharas, Ki Afal Gav, Shei Efshir, La Adam, Beloy Parnasa. We're not giving any, you know, magic uh, segulais here that if you're Makabal, the Altaira, then, you know, you, it's like you won the lottery. All of a sudden, you know, money's going to come through the chimney. No. Every, it's impossible for a person without parnasa. A person has to do some work to learn Torah. If a person is makabel, the yoke of Torah, ain all of oil The yoke of it is not so strong. The parnasa comes just a little bit easier. Why? Because then, so to speak, God elevates you above the forces of nature. The forces of nature are what's subjugating man to the degeneration and the difficulties and the challenges. And when a person truly, in earnest, accepts upon himself the yoke of heaven, God lifts you up, not entirely. You know, we lost the benefit for the most part. But just a little bit, that biting edge is within our capacity to, to elevate ourselves above. So I want to share something with you. We may have mentioned this in the past. Now, there's a, really an incredible point over here that if you, if, you are, if you are perceptive to the nuances of the Pasuk, you'll see something here that uh, it's unbelievable. It's earth-shattering. The Pasuk says, Vayoytse Moshe es ha'am likras olikim That Moshe took out the people toward God min ha-machene vayisyasvu besach disahar And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Or literally under the mountain. And then the Pasuk says, Vahar Sinai Oshan Kulai. Har Sinai was entirely up in smoke. Mibnei Asher Yarad Olav Hashem Ba'esh because God descended in the fire. Vayal Ashonoi Ke'eshen HaKivshon and the smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace. Vayecharad Kal Hahar. And the mountain trembled. Now, everybody knows in English, if I want to... Uh, if I want to talk to somebody or talk about somebody, who can I pick on? Pick on. Okay, pick on your boss. Yeah, you you let. You sure? No problem. Okay. So I want to talk about Boaz. So I say, Boaz came to the share today. He's a swell guy, right? He's a great guy. 
So first I say the, na- the noun, Boaz, and then I say he, pronoun. Because once I said your name, when I say the pronoun, everybody knows who, you're to- who I'm talking about. But what if I would say, he came to the shir today, Boaz is a great guy. Well, who's the he? Obviously, it's not Boaz because I, I would never use a pronoun before I would identify with a noun. So why when it comes to the mountains over here? It says, They stood at the bottom of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was entirely smoke. It should say the opposite. It should say, Why first the pronoun and then the noun? First it should say the noun. It should say, so the Balaturim says, that's right. Obviously, we're dealing with two different mountains here. It's clear. Says the Balaturim, Melamed shenitlash hahar mimakoymai. From here we learn, the mountain was uprooted from its place. Vinase kehar al har. And it became one mountain on top of another mountain. What in the world is the Balaturim talking about? The mountain got uprooted from its place and it became a mountain on top of a mountain. What's that all about? Maybe. Well, you know, we can't say our own. If we were on our own, maybe it was Mount Everest, you know? So, Marvara Boisai, there's a very interesting safer. The name of the safer is Yalkut Ruveni. Not to be confused with Yalkut Shemoni. Yalkut Ruveni was compiled by Avram Ruvain Katz, who was uh, born in Prague. He was the, his father was the son-in-law of the Kliakar. And what he did was he collected Kabbalistic material that was relevant to the Parshiyos. And he says, Adavar Nifla. He says, Bishas Kabbalas HaToyra Nekar Har HaMariya. Har HaMariya was uprooted. Ubal Midbar, and it came to the desert. So that the Torah should be given on this great place. So you say, what? Where did he tell? You know, where did he get that from? Where did he pluck that one from? How does he know the Rebbe Shalom uprooted Har Hamaria and he brought it to the Midbar? The answer is, it's the the Balaturim and the Yagrovini fit together hand in hand. The Balaturim is Medayik in the pasuk. There's obviously another mountain we're dealing with because it says Vayisyatsvu besach de Sahar. And then it says Bahar Sinai, so we're doing another mountain. So from here we derive, obviously there's another mountain that, uh, that, that we're dealing with, and that is, in fact, Har Hamariya. That's So now the question is, which mountain was the Torah given on, and which mountain was Kafalim Har Kigigas? So, Vayisyatsu Betach Sahar. They stood under the mountain, according to the Yalkut Ruveni. That was Har Hamaria suspended over their heads. So it could be now they're sandwiched in between the two mountains. They they're they're actually they're being sat. I always thought. I always wondered. You know, the Gemara tells us that who was the greatest un of all time? Moshe and Aaron. Why? Because Avram Avinu said, "Va'anoichi afar va'efer," but he's saying he's an entity; he's ashes. And and what? And Dora Mel says, "Va'anoichi toilas v'loyish," but um, even greater was Moshe Rabbeinu who said, "Va'nachnu ma." What am I? So I always wonder. You know, this, this doesn't fit in to the fact that Chazal say the Torah was given on Har Sinai. What do you mean Har Sinai? Har Sinai, at least, it's the smallest mountain, but it's something. That's like David and Abraham. The, 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 the Torah should be given on nothing. But according to this, that the Torah was re- really given on Har Hamaria, Chazal tell us, Vayaris Hamakai Meirachai, he saw the place from afar. So the Medrash asks, What do you mean Hamakai? It's not Hamakai, it's a Har. So the Medrash says, originally it was nothing. Originally it was an Amek. Originally it was zero. And Hashem, uh, Avram Avinu said, this is where the Beis Amin is going to be, on a nothing? So Hashem said, okay, I'll, I'll give it some, uh, some character. But it was a nothing. So why did the Torah have to be given on Haram Maria? 
Because even lower than Har Sinai, even more nothing than Har Sinai, it's not good enough to be Anoichi Toilas Valoyah. It's not good enough to be Anoichi Offer Vapor. You need to be nothing. You need to be Venach Numa. That's what Har Sinai was. By the way, the Chsam Soifer uses this in a tshuva. That the Chsam Soifer says, you know, the, there's a Mishnah in Avay Zara that every single mountain in Eretz Yisrael, they served Avay Zara on it. So the Chassam Sarver says, so, so how did we build the base Hamikdash on Har Hamoria if it was served as uh, an Avay Zara? So he says, well, very simple. It wasn't anything. It only became a mountain when Avram Avinu was Mispala that it should turn into a mountain. And the first thing done on it was the Akedah. So Avram Avinu already like, laid stakes to it before anybody served it as Avay Zara. But be it as it may, it comes out that the Torah was given what? On Har HaMaria and Har Sinai. So now we know what Rabbi Yehuda Halevi means. Diber B'Kadshay B'Har HaMor Yoy Mashvi Zohar. Well, it's hard to dig this was Har Sinai, so it was there, but it wasn't given. So where was it given on? The Alka Ruveni says, Kedei Shatinasein HaToyra Al Mokem HaMula. In other words, that it should be given on Har HaMaria. So what's the Pashuk Shad? So it must have been Har Sinai. It was given on both. It was given on both. In other words, either they were sandwiched in between and they stood on Har Sinai and the Torah was on Har Maria, or, you know, they were both in the, they're close enough. You know, it's good enough. <laughs> so th- that's uh, an amazing uh, little understanding and picture of the giving of the Torah. Comes the Mordechai Gifter, Zechazak Levracha, and he says a very important idea. You know, throughout Shas, we have a concept of we have the Maiminimba and the Masmi'ilimba. That there are two approaches to learning Taira. One approach is, well, I have a certain intellect, and I have a certain intellectual capacity, and I have certain reason, and the Taira needs to fit human logic. So what the person wants to do is they want to bring the Torah down to human logic and human dictates. That's the Masmi'ilimba. The Maiminimba say, no, the Torah is Seichel Eloiki, it's, it's divine wisdom. If I understand it, okay, and if I don't understand it, it's not, it's not subject to my processes. There's a reason why there are principles in the Torah called Shneik Suvam HaMachishim Zezeh. You know why? So that a human being understands that I don't necessarily get this document. There's a reason why in the Torah... There's a concept of Ein Mukta Mamulchar Batayra. So a person understands this is not a history book, this is not a, an intellectual discipline, this is not science and mathematics that's subject to 1 plus 1 equals 2. The process of understanding Torah is not always a process that a human being understands. It's Lamala Misechel Anushi. This is a divine body of wisdom. And when a person su- subjects themselves to it, the Rebbe Shalom says, then I raise you up above and beyond the lowly vicissitudes of this world. Now the original plan was that if you're Mechabal the Torah, you will not be subject whatsoever to the laws of this world. There's no illness, there's no sickness, there's no, there's no Parnasa needs, there's no Gemilas Chasadim. However, even though that benefit was lost, just a little bit, if a person is makabal upon themselves the yoke of Torah, the Torah allows a person to ease a bit from being subject to the vicissitudes of this world. And therefore, the immediate introduction to the giving of the Torah is Vayihi Mimacharaz. It was the day after Yom Kippur. And, well, wait a second, that didn't happen yet. That happened. Why are you telling me something that didn't happen? The answer is, you need, well, what you need to know is one thing. That this body and this Torah that you're about to receive is not based on your processes of intellect. This is not going in chronological order. This is not something necessarily that you could always understand and make sense out of and say, well, you know, this doesn't fit with my reason. It doesn't have to. It doesn't need to. It's not supposed to always. But that's the introduction to the giving of the Torah. The introduction to the giving of the Torah is it's lamala meisechel enushi. It's ein mukdom umu'ufa Torah. It does not follow chronological order. And when you accept that upon yourself, that raises you up just a little bit above the Teva, above the laws of nature. And in this stage of life that we're in today, it just raises us up a little bit. 
But the Torah inherently still has the capacity to bring us back to the level of other Marisha and Kodim Lachet. Because the Gemara says in Ksubis, Andav Kuf Yeralf Amabez, that ultimately there's a concept of Tchiyas Hamesim. When we say, Kal Yisrael Yeshlam Chelek Lo'elam Haba, there's resurrection of the dead. So the question is, what does a person need to do to, to be resurrected one day? What is it dependent on? The Gemara in Ksubis quotes a pasuk, Ki Tal Oirois Talecha. Says the Gemara, Hamishdamish Ba'or Toira or Toira Mechayehu. The Chol She'ein Mishdamish Ba'or Toira Ein Or Toira Mechayehu. You can have a guy. He's a good-hearted guy. He's a nice guy. He's a sweet guy. He's a sympathetic, empathetic, friendly guy. But if a person wants to walk again one day, you gotta have Limanat Torah. Why? Because the Torah, even today, has that inherent capacity to lift us up above the laws of nature. Now, we're still in a stage of existence that the natural processes still transpire and everyone is subject to them. But the day will come that what we do in this world and the Torah that we learn in this world will ultimately one day raise a Jew up above all the laws of nature. We shall be zoicha ba'achras hayamim. We shall be zoicha bila melvas lanetzach. And uh, this is the hakdama to kabal sa Torah of ahi mimachras that ain't muktam amulcha ba Torah. Have a good day, shkaya. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.